Exposition by Charles Hedden Spurgeon John 1, 1-37 John is the majestic evangelist. He is the high-soaring eagle with piercing eyes. His is the gospel of the Son of God. Verses 1-3 In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. We cannot describe the deity of Christ in clearer language than John uses. He was with God. He was God. He did the works of God, for he was the creator. If any doubt his deity, they must do so in distinct defiance of the language of Holy Scripture. 4, 5. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Christ is still not understood. Jesus is still not known. How should darkness understand the light of God? It opposes the light of God, it has to flee before light, but it does not, it cannot understand the light of God. O oh God, work a miracle in our dark hearts and fill them with the light of Christ. 6, 7. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. That is our business, too. We who are ministers sent from God bear witness of the light, that all men through him may believe. Oh, how often we go home and cry, who has believed our report? We do not ask you to believe in us, no, but in our Master, whose heralds we are. If we can lead you to faith in him, we shall be glad, indeed. But, if not, we will sorrow because we have missed our mark and failed in our purpose. 8, 9. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lights every man that comes into the world. If any man has saving light, true light, he gets it through Christ. There is no other light, all other light is but darkness visible. The light in which we see God comes from Jesus. 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Strange was it that the Creator came to his own earth and yet he was unknown. Men mistook him they hated him, they crucified him whom they ought to have entertained with sacred hospitality and worshipped with holy loyalty. 11, 12. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. All men are not the sons of God. The doctrine of the universal fatherhood is utterly untrue. They only become the sons of God who receive Christ and believe on his name. Otherwise they are heirs of wrath, even as others. To them gave power to become the sons of God. 13. Which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. There is another birth beside the natural one, never does the birth of the flesh make us Christians. If our ancestry should be a line of saints, yet are we born sinners, we must be born again if we are to become saints. If we could trace our pedigree to a perfect man, if such there is, yet the birth by the flesh would not avail us. Sons of God are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. 14. And the Word was made flesh. 
here was the incarnation of him who made all things. He that is God, was made flesh. 14. And dwelt among us, and we, the apostles. 14. Beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. O, oh, all you who would know Christ, learn that he is worth the knowing. He is full of grace for your sinnership and full of truth for your ignorance. He can cleanse and he can teach. There is everything in him that you need. You shall not be deceived, for he is full of the truth of God, you shall not be rejected, for he is full of grace. 15-18 John bore witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spoke, he that comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness of all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time. He is too high, too spiritual to be perceived by human senses. 18. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. What of God we need to know, we may see in Christ, enough to save us, enough to sanctify us, enough to make us all like the only begotten Son of the Father. 19, 20. And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? And he confessed, and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. With indignation he must have repelled the idea that he was the Messiah. I am not the Christ. 21-23 and they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you that prophet? And he answered, Number. Then said they unto him, Who are you? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What say you of yourself? He said, I am the voice, humbly he reduces himself to a voice but he was not a voice and nothing more. There was much that was mighty and wise in that voice. 23-27 Of one crying in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him, and said unto him, Why baptize you, then, if you are not that Christ? nor Elijah, neither that prophet. John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there stands one among you, whom you know not, he it is, who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoelaces I am not worthy to unloose. How John hides himself behind his master. He was a most worthy man, a truly great man, but he counted himself unworthy of the most menial service for Christ and felt honored by filling the office of a slave to unloosen his master's shoelaces. It is better to be the slave of Christ than to rule vast empires. He who truly serves him is glorified thereby. 28, 29. These things were done in Bethabar beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day John saw Jesus coming unto him, and says, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. Now is he bringing out his message. Now is he pointing out his master. 30, 31. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me and I knew him not. John knew Jesus very well, but he did not know him as the sent one of God, the Messiah, till after he had received the sign and token at his baptism.
I knew him not. 31 to 34. But that he should be made manifest to Israel, therefore have I come, baptizing with water. And John bore record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom you shall see the Spirit descending, and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Jesus and John must have been well acquainted with one another, they were closely related, but John was not to know anybody as the Messiah till he received the token from God. When he saw the token, then he officially knew and he bore instant witness, this is the Son of God. 35, 36. Again, the next day, John stood with two of his disciples. And looking at Jesus as he walked, with holy reverence, with loving awe, gazing upon this extraordinary person, as he walked. 36, 37. He said, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. This is our one business tonight, to cry, Behold the Lamb of God.